Hey guys, today we are going to be reviewing exponents and radicals. So exponent laws are a little tricky to double check in the calculator. You really just need to go back through and double check that you've been following the rules, but radicals, you can double check on the calculator for equivalency. So once we get down to these problems, we will double check our answers that way. Let's start with exponent laws though. Um, remember, most of these rules are on your formula chart, so if you have forgotten them, you can look there. Product rule is when we multiply our bases, we add the exponents. Power rule means if our exponents are separated by parentheses, if we have a power to a power, you're going to multiply or distribute those out. Quotient rule means if we're dividing, then we subtract our exponents. Power of a quotient just means that we distribute the exponent to the numerator and denominator of a fraction if it's being raised to a power. Zero exponent, remember anything to the zero power is one, and negative exponents basically just mean reciprocals. All right, let's use some of these rules to simplify expressions. So this first one, I am just multiplying two expressions. So the first thing I'm gonna do is multiply the coefficients, and 16 times two is 32. And then I'm going to add the exponents with the like bases because of the product rule. So x to the 0 times x to the 15th would be x to the 0 plus 15, so x to the 15th. y to the 3rd times y to the negative 26th would be y to the 3 plus negative 26, so y to the negative 23rd. And then z to the 32nd times z to the 0 would be z to the 32nd because 32 plus 0 is 32. Okay, so I'm almost done. The last thing that I need to do is simplify this negative exponent by moving it to the denominator of a fraction. So I'm going to set up my fraction template. 32 will stay in the numerator since that has an invisible positive 1 exponent x to the 15th stays in the numerator since it was positive exponent, y to the negative 23rd will move to the denominator as a positive exponent, and then z to the 32nd will stay in the numerator since it had a positive exponent. So there is my final answer. All right, the next one, I have a power to a power. So I'm going to distribute out that two exponent outside the parentheses using the power rule. I'm going to be multiplying my exponents. So right here, I will end up having an a to the second, and then b to the eighth to the negative second. We multiply those, and I would get b to the negative sixteenth. And now I need to set up my fraction template. a to the second will stay in the numerator since it was positive b to the negative 16th will move to the denominator since it was a negative exponent. All right, this next one says the expression a to the 18th times a to the 5th to the 2nd is equivalent to a to the m. What is the value of m? So basically, they're asking me to simplify this. They both have bases of a, so I can simplify them into one expression. And then they're asking, what would the exponent be after you simplify the whole thing? So let's start by simplifying. The first thing I'm going to do is power rule, distribute that two exponent and multiply those exponents. So I'd get a to the 18th times a to the 5 times 2 is 10. And now I'm multiplying these bases, so I'm going to add the exponents. And 18 plus 10 is 28. So what is the value of m? The value of m is 28. Okay, let's look at this next one. I have j times k to the seventh raised to the third power divided by j to the third. So I'm going to simplify these j's together first. j to the seventh divided by j to the third. I would subtract those exponents and I get j to the fourth and then k to the seventh to the third. I just use the power rule there and multiply the exponents and I get k to the 21. So there's the final answer, j to the fourth, k to the 21st. 
Okay, the next one, it says simplify the expression and all I see is division, so I'm just gonna be doing the quotient rule. So let's start with our coefficients. We're gonna divide them like normal. 36 divided by six is six. And then I am going to simplify the x's next. I subtract those exponents, so it would be negative nine minus negative three for the x exponent. So that's gonna end up being x to the negative sixth. And then I'm going to subtract the exponents of the y exponents. So y to the third divided by y to the seventh would be y to the three minus seven, so y to the negative four. And then the last one is z to the 15th divided by z to the negative five and 15 minus negative five is what I would do for those exponents, so I get z to the 20th, because minus negative is the same thing as adding. Okay, so I simplified with the quotient rule, but this is not fully simplified because of the negative exponents. So now I'm gonna set up my fraction template and I'm gonna move those negative exponents to the bottom. So the six stays at the top because it has an invisible positive one exponent, x to the negative six moves to the denominator, so does the y to the negative fourth, and then z to the 20th can stay in the numerator since it was a positive exponent. Okay, the last exponent law one says, the length and width of a rectangle are shown below. Write the area of the rectangle as a simplified expression. And they gave us the length and the width here. So the first thing I'm going to do is think about area of a rectangle, I just do length times width. So to find the area here, I just need to multiply these two things. So I have eight B to the third, C to the seventh divided by four, C to the fourth times 12 B to the fourth, all to the second divided by C to the negative third. So there's lots of different ways to go about multiplying this. That's what we eventually have to do in the end. But if I look at each individual expression, I can see that there are things within this fraction and within this fraction that I can simplify. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Eight divided by four in that first expression is two. And then I have B to the third, and then C to the seventh divided by C to the fourth is C to the third. And then I'm gonna go ahead and simplify this expression too. The 12 doesn't have anything to simplify with, so that'll just stay as 12. B to the fourth to the second is B to the eighth. And then that C to the negative third, I can go ahead and move it to the numerator, move it to the opposite part of the fraction where it was and make it positive. And now I'm just gonna multiply this across. Two times 12 is 24. B to the third times B to the eighth would be B to the 11th. And then C to the third times C to the third, I would add those exponents and get C to the sixth. So there is the area of the rectangle as a simplified expression. All right, last thing we're gonna go over is simplifying radicals. Remember, we need to identify perfect square factors and then take the square root of those and move them outside the radical. So I like to identify perfect square factors by making a factor tree and then a pair of numbers is a square root, so they'll exit as one. So let's go ahead and do that with 76. Um, I know it's even and 76 divided by two is 38, so I get two and 38, and then 38 is also even, and 38 divided by two is 19, which is a prime number, so I am done. So the square root of 76 simplifies to the square root of two times two times 19. I use those prime factors to write the prime factorization. And I see a pair of numbers two, Think about it, two times two is four, and the square root of four is two. So they leave the radical as one number, and then I put square root of 19, because that's what I had left over. So the square root of 76 simplifies to two square root of 19.
Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to use your calculator to check that this answer is correct. You cannot use the calculator to get these answers, but you can use the calculator to check that your final answer is correct. So I'm going to type in the original problem, which was square root of 76 first, and I get that decimal. And then I'm going to type in 2 square root of 19 and make sure I get the same exact decimal, which I do, so I did it correctly. Okay, last problem. Simplify square root of 378. So I know that that is even since it ends in 8. So I'm going to start by dividing by 2. And then 189 ends in 9. So maybe it's divisible by 3. It looks like it is. So 3 and 63. And then 63, I know that that divides into nine and seven. Seven is prime, but nine breaks into three and three. So there's all of the prime numbers, two, three, 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 and seven. So the square root of 378 is equivalent to the square root of two times three times three times three times seven. And I only see one pair in there. So the three times three will leave the radical as one, three. And then on the inside of the radical, I'm left with two times three times seven. Two times three is six, six times seven is 42. So this simplifies to three square root of 42. And we can double check that we are correct with the calculator. Square root of 378 is 19.44 and square 3 square root of 42 is the same decimal, so we did it correctly.